Um, trigonometry is the branch of mathematics which deals with the ratios between the sides of a right triangle. It is right triangle geometry. That's all trig is. It's just right triangles all day, all the time. Um, and we have three major trig ratios. We have sine, cosine, and tangent. Those are the three majors, and then all of the other trig ratios are based off of those three. We're going to start with tangent, and the tangent is the ratio. Remember, ratio is basically a fraction, so we're talking about fractions here, and we usually convert them to decimals in trig. We deal with the decimals more than we deal with the fractions. So. Um, the tangent is the ratio to the opposite side of a given angle to the adjacent side. Now, we don't have 90 degree trig ratios because we never talk about the right angle. We're talking about that's not 100% true. We don't generally talk about the right angle, especially if you're talking about sine, cosine, and tangent. We're talking about the two other angles in the triangle. Okay? And so if we have angle A, here, the tangent of angle A is the opposite side, whatever that length is, divided by the adjacent side, so the side that touches it. And we get opposite over adjacent, and so if this was 5 and this was 10, then our trig ratio would be 5 divided by 10, or 0.5 for tangent A. Now, if we looked at, tan um, we brought in another angle, and we'll say this is B, then the numbers switch. For B, this is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. And so the tangent of B would then be, instead of 5 over 10, it would be 10 over 5. So the two angles in the triangle, the tangents are going to be reciprocals of each other because depending on which angle you're talking about depends on which side is opposite and which side is adjacent. Okay. So you always go across the triangle for tangent and put that number on top. It gets used a lot. Surveying is probably what you see the most often. You see the guys with the tripod looking through the thing. They are calculating angles. They're, the, the guy on the other end has a stick, and they calculate the angle to the top of the stick from where they're standing or whatever, and then they can measure accurately the distance between them and things like that. So surveying is used a lot. Property lines are drawn this way, things like that. Um, engineering navigating, they angle to a star and, and things like that for um, navigating, all kinds of things. Um, so, like I said, the three basics, cosine, sine, and tangent. We're doing tangent first, and then we'll do cosine and sine. So if we find the tangent for x, 12 is the opposite. You'll notice we're not using the hypotenuse. Here, this is the hypotenuse. We use the hypotenuse for sine and cosine, but we do not use the hypotenuse for tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of x will be 12 over 5, and we always generally calculate that into a decimal, and so it's 2.4. Now the tangent of y the opposite is 5, so we have 5 over 12, and when we calculate that into a decimal, we have 0.416 repeating. So I'm just going to call it 0.4167. Typically speaking, if you have more than enough digits, we round to the nearest 4 when we're talking about uh, trig. We usually talk 4 digits. Here we only had two, so whatever. But when you have like a long string of de decimals, we round it to four. Okay. And if you look in those trig tables I was telling you about, the big book of trig tables, they're four digits. 
sometimes six, but usually. Sometimes you're not given all three sides. But we have Pythagoras, so we don't need all. We only need two of them. We can find the third one. So I've got seven squared plus b squared is equal to 25 squared. So 49 plus b squared is equal to 225, 625, sorry. Subtract 49 from each side. And b squared is equal to 576. And I'm going to take the square root of that. Where's my square root? Right there. So b is 24. I can now find the tangent of x, which will be opposite over adjacent which will be 24 over 7, which is 3.4286. Sometimes we're given the angle, and we're given sides, but we're missing one. And this time we, we use the calculator. In the past, you used the book, the trig table book, and we found the calculation. So right here on the calculator, you see we have tangent, cosine, and sine. These are other things that have to do with trig, but we're not going to be using those. Okay, so we're just using tangent, cosine, and sine. If you look at a regular scientific calculator, that's not a calculator. sine, cosine, tangent, usually they'll have that button right on them. Um, the iPhone, you know, if you turn it sideways, you get those buttons. Pretty much all the calculators will have them. Um, as long as they're not your basic, it has to be a scientific. But it can be a pretty basic scientific. You simply enter the tangent, or the number, the angle, and hit tangent. Okay? So the tangent of 61 degrees is going to be equal to 1.8040. So I'm just going to put 1.804. Okay. Now, we also know that the tangent of 61 is opposite over adjacent. So we just opposite over adjacent on all these. Okay, so it's 14 over x. Well, we take this 18.01 and we plug it in right there. And so, sorry, 1.804 is equal to 14 divided by x. Multiply both sides by x. Those cancel. And so I have 1.804 x is equal to 14. And then divide both sides by 1.804. And then I have my answer for x. So let me just do that really quickly. And x is 7.76. Okay. Now, is this completely accurate? Probably not, because I rounded my tangent. If I didn't round the tangent, actually, it's pretty still. It's, I got a different decimal. Here I have, oops, <clears throat> 7.7605. Without rounding the tangent, I get 7.7603, and then, you know, the decimals. But it's, it's really darn close, so don't worry about that. Any questions on this so far? Here is one kind of tangent chart, and it's got sine, cosine, and tangent. It has the angle on here, but you'll see this has all whole number angles. It doesn't have the minutes and seconds and things I was telling you about with where you can have angles with decimal places in this particular tangent chart. But if you see one of these, I want to know what is this degree right here? Now, I know I'm using tangent, so I have opposite over adjacent. So the tangent 
of x degrees is equal to 20 divided by 8. So I take 20 and I divide it by 8. And so I have the tangent of x degrees is equal to 2.5. I come over to this tangent table, and I look on here, and I find the closest thing I can to 2.5. I have 2.4 and 2.47 and 2.60. The one that will round to 2.5 is the 2.47. That's the closest thing to 2.5. And so then I say, okay, what's my angle? 68 degrees. So x is equal to 68 degrees. Do you have to use a table? Absolutely not. There's a function called inverse tangent. Okay. So what I do is I have the tangent of x is equal to 2.5. The inverse tangent of 2.5 will give me x. And see this negative 1 exponent? That means inverse tangent. That is also a button on the calculator, except on, like, say, for example, this calculator. If I look above the tangent button in green, it has tangent exponent negative 1. And so I'd have to push in second function, inverse tangent, 2.5. And I'm actually going to get a more accurate reading using the calculator. Because see how this doesn't have the decimals? And this was not exactly 2.5. This is going to give me that x is equal to 68.1986, et cetera, et cetera. So the inverse tangent button on here, we don't have an inverse tangent button, so here's what you have to do. You have to put in the 2.5 and see this inverse, INV for inverse, and that gives me the inverse functions. And so then I can hit the button and see here's 68.19859, so I rounded it to 1986. Okay. Um, did I tell you guys about Desmos? Desmos is a free scientific calculator, graphing calculator app that you can download for both Android and iPhones. Um, Desmos has an inverse function. Um, let me pull it up. They also have an online version, so you can even just go online and use it. Beautiful free math. It's an online graphing calculator. It's completely free. It's um, it's really nice. So if you're in Desmos, see how this, like, and it looks the same here as it does on your phone. The only difference is this part where you're entering text is actually underneath the graph part. That's, but uh, everything else looks the same. If you go to functions, here's trig. Click on inverse, and you have arc tangent. See how that's under inverse? So that's the other thing. I forgot about that. This is also known as arctangent. So if I'm in Desmos, I'll put in my two, sorry, I click arctangent first and then 2.5. And it, what? Oh, no, it flipped it. Didn't it flip? Okay, let's not use Desmos for this. I have to figure Desmos out a little bit more. I'm barely just learning Desmos. Um, so you've got your calculator here on your computer, the iPhone calculator, um, which probably is very similar to the Droid calculator. I haven't really looked at those, but... You know, I turn it sideways and it becomes scientific. Um, uh, iPhone calculator. 
you'll hit the second button up here at the top and then it'll give you the inverse tangent. Yeah, you'll want to put the number in first. I'm just going to cross this out. Okay, so you'll put the number in first, so 2.5, and then you'll hit second function, tangent, and you'll get the wrong answer. Hold on. Okay, so the iPhone's wrong. Um, all right, here we're going to find the value of x using either a calculator or a trigonometry table. I know that the tangent of 57 is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, so x over 12. So I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to put in tangent 57. So that's going to be 1.5399 is equal to x over 12. Multiply both sides by 12. And I get x is equal to 18.5. So the length of this side would be 18.5. What calculator are you using? Okay. Um, by, we're going to find the sine and the cosine for A. And then I want you to go ahead and find A degrees. Like figure out. And you can use either sine or cosine for that. You'll do the inverse. Um, if you don't have a scientific calculator on you, we'll skip that part, but just try the Using the Pythagorean theorem, so I'd have 12 squared plus x squared is equal to 15 squared, giving me that x is 9. Okay, so then sine of a would be 9 over 15, which is 0.6. The cosine of a would be 12 over 15, which is 0.8. And then you could either use the inverse sine of 0.6 or the inverse cosine of 0.8 to get A. And A would be 36.87 degrees. Any questions on that one? This is a button on the calculator. Okay. Got it? Okay. For this one, I do 5 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared, and so C is going to be 13. So that makes this side over here 13. So the sine of A would be... 12 over 13, which is 0 0.9231. And the cosine of A is going to be 5 over 13, which is 0 0.3846. And to find A, I can either do the inverse sine of 9231, or I can do the inverse cosine of 0.3846. And either way, I should get 67.38 degrees. So these are ores right here. Okay. Um. Applications for sine and cosine and tangent. If we're looking at a building and we're standing on the ground, the angle from where we are to like the ground to the top of the building is the angle of elevation makes like elevate going up right so we have the angle of elevation and there's your line of sight and here's the horizon which is the ground and so you have your angle of elevation now if you're up in the air because you're a bird or you're in an airplane or a hot air balloon or you're on top of a building or something and then you have the horizon line which is straight out from where you can see and you go and you look at something down, you have the angle of depression. 
So basically, angle of elevation opens up from the ground, angle of depression opens down from the sky. So far okay? So if I am standing on a cliff, and I know that I walked 1,500 feet to get to the cliff, and I'm standing on the cliff and I can somehow measure the exact angle, I can figure out how tall the cliff is. Okay. So I've got the angle is 18. That's my angle right here. Because my angle, we have parallel lines, and when we cut a parallel line with a transversal, these two angles will always match. Okay. So I've got my angle is 18 degrees. I have adjacent and I have opposite. Okay, so for this one, opposite and adjacent, I'm going to use tangent. So the tangent of 18 is going to be equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So x over 1500. So first I'll take the tangent of 18, and that's 0.3249. Multiply it by 1,500, and I have the height of the cliff. The height of the cliff is 487.38 feet. So I can figure out, with this measurement, how high I climbed. You'd have to have a tool um, similar to what the surveyors use, like a sexton. Um, so if you had a sextant, you'd line it up to the horizon and then you'd like bring this thing down and to line it up to the base camp and then you could measure the angle. That's what ship navigators use as a sextant. So um, you'd have to have something similar to that. Maybe not as big as on a ship. There's probably little ones, but so far okay. Okay, so if I have just a problem here where I don't have a picture, it helps me to draw a picture. Charlie is standing 200 feet from the base of a tall building. You don't have to get this fancy, but you know, building. And the elevation is 57 degrees. How tall is the building? Well, again, I have opposite and adjacent, so I'm going to be dealing with tangent on these. Probably most of the time you'll be dealing with tangent on these, to be honest. So the tangent of 57 is going to be equal to some unknown quantity over 200 feet. I calculate the tangent of 57, which I should know because we've done it like three times today. Multiply both sides by 200. And the building is 307.97 feet high. So I'd probably just go ahead and say 308 feet at that point. Plane is flying. Airplane is flying at a height of 3,000 feet above sea level. Okay. If the pilot spots an island, ooh, palm tree, island, okay, in the distance with an angle of depression of 23 degrees, so the angle of depression is right here. Okay, which means this angle right here is also 23 degrees. How far is the island? from a point directly under the plane. Okay, so remember these two angles will always match. And just make sure you don't label this 23 because it's not this one, it's this one over here. So now I have, again, opposite and adjacent, so it's still gonna be tangent. So tangent of 23 is equal to 3,000 divided by x. The tangent of 23 is point 4245. And remember, we have that shortcut where I can just switch these 
because if I do all the steps, they're going to switch anyway. So x is equal to 3,000 divided by 0.4245. So if I take 3,000 and I divide it by my tangent, I get 7,067.6 feet.